If you've ever heard the devastating words, I'm leaving you and I am never coming back and felt your heart drop into your stomach, this episode is for you. Today, we're hearing the story of a wife who was determined to get her husband back, even though it seemed all hope was lost. She didn't just sit around in despair. She took action. Listen in to discover the surprising steps that she took to turn things around and how you can restore hope in your marriage too. I'm Laura Doyle, New York Times bestselling author, and I was the perfect wife until I got married. This is the Empowered Wife Podcast. My guest, Vanessa, already felt unloved. And then her husband left her and said he was never coming back. That gave her the impetus she needed to make some changes. And today her husband is the man of her dreams. They fall asleep cuddling and she is confident that he loves her dearly and profoundly. She's gonna tell us what she did so you can do it too. Vanessa! Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. I'm so excited to have you on. Hi, Laura. I'm so honored to be here. Well, great. Well, you know, I always like to hear about what was going on in the bad old days. So take us back to that. Well, <laughs> I guess um, just a little rundown. <laughs> I did meet my husband in high school. We're high school sweethearts. Uh, we started dating when we were 17. And uh, we dated a little bit into college. And we were together, maybe the freshman year. Um, and he asked me if I wanted to, to live with him. And I said, I'm never leaving my family. <laughs> Thinking that it wasn't what it was, um, but he was so ready to just settle down. And well, needless to say that ended there. <laughs> and we kept in touch and we stayed very good friends. Uh, he was in college out of town, out of um, the state. And he would still come home and visit family. And he would always reach out to me. Um, so we kept recon uh, reconnecting. And uh, lots of things happen, obviously, during our, our lives. And uh, there was uh, previous relationships and things like that. And we also had uh, a similar loss or a tragedy. And his mother passed away. Mm -hmm. And my family uh, and I was there at the funeral. So we still shared that love for each other. And uh, years later, my mother passed away and he also reached out. And um, at that time, we were both in a different relationship. So those relationships did fall apart. They didn't uh, follow through, and, but we both had children. So I had a daughter and he had a son. And um, it was during this time that he had, I don't know, maybe like a few months after my mother passed, he reached out for our high school 10 year reunion. <clears throat> and I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. But apparently, he said, you know what, would you want to go? And he's you know, I wasn't thinking about it again. Like he wants me to go with him. It was for me, I was just so out of it. I just said, you know what? That sounds like fun. Let me get a date. <laughs> so he's like, oh, okay. Well, um, I'll see you there. And it was, it was the most magical night ever. <laughs> oh, you didn't and end up getting a date. It sounds like. I, my best friend went with me. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, my girlfriend gotcha. did. And he came with his sister. So it was, it was, it was just kind of like, okay, we need to feel the water with, with, you know, stick a toe in and figure out what's going on. Uh -huh. um, his sister did all the digging, you know, while we were sitting at the table trying to get refreshers and stuff like that. And she said, are you married? Do you have children? How many children do you have? And she just kind of, you know, did the whole interview there. And <laughs> I just said, you know, 
um, I thought that he just had a son. And she said, well, that's over with. It didn't really last very long. Um, and I just said, wow, okay, well, this is an interesting opportunity, <laughs> to say the least. And um, we, wa we went outside. He took me outside to the balcony area. And um, he just told me the most beautiful things. Um, it always makes me really emotional. <laughs> um, he just said that I was the most amazing woman that he was ever with. And all the relationships before never surmounted to anything that he had with me. And he wasn't sure if it was because it was puppy love <laughs> or if it was for real. But <clears throat> he said that he had to give it a shot regardless of if I was happily married, <laughs> he was ready to come be a homewrecker. <laughs> wow. oh, I just, he just said such beautiful things. He was like my prince, <laughs> my knight in shining armor. And oh, I was telling my daughter the story just recently. And I just can't believe we're here. <laughs> wow. Wow. But after that 10 year reunion, it didn't take much for us to want to live our happily ever after. Ah, yeah. And I really thought <laughs> everything's going to be smooth sailing. <laughs> That's it. What could possibly go wrong at this uh, point? Yeah. Little did I know it was all me. It was. I was literally living in a jail of my own negative thoughts. I was a prisoner of my own feelings. And it was just, I felt so sad all the time. So sad for, I, I mean, now I can look back and say, wow, like, well, I was just always thinking about the worst things and, I really thought my husband hated me. Like, <laughs> who would want to be around this person? Like, it was so bad to the point of, like, I was having physical manifestations of things happening. Like, I would forget to turn off the stove. I would leave the door wide open, the garage door open, the car was on in the garage. It's crazy stuff that was happening. I just was so like discombobulated or just out of touch with whatever was going on. It just, it seemed like a lot. And I guess you can, you can tell that, you know, I did eventually leave my family <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because <laughs> he, he was, he, he left Illinois and we, um, we moved to the South and, um, you know, mostly because of his job and, and it was fine for me to, to, you know, pick up and leave at this point. Um, I think it was just the perfect time, but also, you know, it was a change of, I guess, change of family, change of livelihood, change of work. A lot of change. Know, lots of changes. Losing and your then, support of your family and your, just your everything that you let, moved away from, right? Yeah. And I didn't, I don't think I took in everything that was impacting, like all these different changes. I didn't keep up with, you know, like friends as much as I would have liked. Um, and everything seemed a problem. Like everything just seemed to be an issue uh, between him and I. And I drove two hours one way to go to work. So oh. it was a four hour round trip oh. every day. <laughs> and he used to, he used to complain about like, Oh, well, I'm raising the children. And um, if I was at work, it wasn't so much that the job was a, a hard or demanding job. It's just, it was very time consuming. Um, I was like a one woman show. Um, 
And if I think back to like even that particular role, there was somebody that um, was employed to work under me, but um, there was also some friction there because um, she was anticipating getting the role that I had and I came in and it just, it, it seemed like I was, you know, the enemy <laughs> and yeah. um, it just felt like I just didn't have any support whatsoever. So my family support oh. wasn't there. My job would, you know, I thought was going to be something easy. I could just step right into turned into a little bit of a conflict at first. And, you know, let's not forget the transit. Yeah. That's <laughs> a lot of hours on the road. On the road. Oh my gosh. And yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He so was, you were missing a lot of things that you needed for your well being. Sounds like. Exactly. And, and I just wanted to keep rolling with it. Right. I just thought, you know what, I'm here. I got a raise. Um, you know, my, my life is changing for the better. Right. And it's so funny because it was kind of like, the same conversation whenever my husband and I would talk about like what's wrong and stuff like that. Um, And I just like, I left my whole family for you. And he said, let me think about this. You left to get a promotion. You left to be with a man who's taking care of you. You left so that (laughs) you life is better. And I'm supposed to say that, oh, such a sad little Vanessa, like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. He can never see why I was so upset. And Mm -hmm. I think that obviously I could have probably did a better job of explaining my needs and my desires, but it just never, I never had the right words. It just always seemed to be like, I was ungrateful. And he would tell me like, those were the three things. I didn't listen. I was ungrateful and I didn't respect him. Ouch. <laughs> oh, it was, it was so wanted, hard. Yeah. You just wanted some empathy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And some c- compassion for, and he wasn't, he wasn't having that. Sounds like. And I, I totally took the victimhood road. <laughs> I, I know I did. And then, you know, I was talking to my friend and she, she would. She was a uh, a coworker, and we were like the it team when it came <laughs> to work. And she was just like, "You are such a badass, Vanessa. Like you, you and I, and and we had another coworker with us. And like these three women, we just we're some badasses getting stuff done. And um, I can't I can't understand why he doesn't see how you're so valuable and everything that you're doing. You're so smart. And she was always in my corner. And, and you know, of course, she would hear me out and listen to all my venting and ranting. And uh, it was it was definitely difficult. Even when I think about it now, I'm like, wow, I was. I was really disrespectful and I couldn't see it any other way. It it just seemed like my own little world um, and the smallest of emotions would like set me overboard and like I couldn't handle my own feelings. And um, I, yeah, it just felt like zero outlet. Um, When things would get really bad, it was, it was literally just like, the silent treatment, cold wars. And he would, I remember he would say some stuff that was like, and whenever, whenever you would be mad, it just, it feels like evil, like, (laughs) like just a presence of like negativity. And I would just look at him like, are you kidding me? I can't even be angry. <laughs> like there's things that I should be able to feel, right? Like yeah. if you if you catch the the good Vanessa, then you know, there's gonna be a little bit of bad Vanessa in there too. But yeah. yeah. It just felt like I couldn't I couldn't be myself and I couldn't um I just couldn't share with him. It it just felt like anything I said would be taken the wrong way. And, um, you know, with, with work being so time consuming, it just, I would cry at work sometimes. Like I would find myself just sitting in front of my boss and tears would just start coming out. I just, I didn't, I couldn't control myself and I I had zero self-care. 
<laughs> Absolutely oh, like zero. a rough time. So, but it sounds like you felt like the marriage was the problem because you were, you're were kicking some butt at work. You're feeling like you're successful at work. So were you starting to think, you know what, this guy, like he can't handle my anger. There's this silent treatment. Maybe I made a mistake here. Is that absolutely? I started thinking um, there's a couple of arguments that we had, and he would say, Why don't you just go back to Chicago? Mm. And I, it just broke my heart. But like thinking back now, I'm like, Wow, he was just trying to help. And he would oh. tell my sister, and he would say, like, I, she, I just can't make her happy. There's, oh. It doesn't matter what I do. She just, she's just not happy. It's like this impossible feat. And when he told me about going back to Chicago, he just, he just wanted me to be comfortable. All these things that were happening, like it really was alarming to him. Like I'm leaving the car out in the garage. That's dangerous, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so, but you didn't hear it as he's just trying to make me comfortable. You heard it as he doesn't, he doesn't love me anymore. He wants me to go away. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah. Oh. I definitely thought that. And, and, you know, in between there were, you know, plenty of, of other things that were happening. Um, you know, we had a co-parent and things like that as well. And, you know, at the very beginning, his relationship with his um, his ex was um, it, it wasn't really good. <laughs> to be honest, he would not he would not answer the phone for her. It, it, if if there was a text message, maybe he'll answer, maybe not. So sometimes he wasn't responding to her text. Sometimes he would. Yes. And I had told him before, maybe you should be a little bit nicer. Right. <laughs> and um, what I started to notice is that they were being more friendly. And my relationship with him was so sour. Like I felt like he was smiling on the phone with her and things like that. I started to get these like jealous bits and it didn't make sense. But um, I just I felt like my mind was always where there was a lack and that's where I always focus. I focused on what was lacking and not on what was going well. So mm -hmm. we made a, we made a move um, from that two hour drive that I was having to take every day. Um, he, he said, you know what, you're, you're, we got to get closer to your job because you can't be driving that every single day. And, um, he said, I'm the man, I should be able to do that. And you'll get to spend time with the kids. And um, these are the things that you say you want. So I want to make sure that you're able to get that. And, you know, he's just such a sweetheart, always trying to do what's right for me and make life easy for me. Just that's always been his, his way. And whenever I would just like I, by then I had already read your book, The Empowered Wife. So I, I have to say that I, I was already practicing some of the skills. And I, I have to admit that I was very, very stubborn. I was very hard headed. I said, now I got this. I got this. And and no, we kept having some recurring fight about, again, don't listen, don't respect, don't, you know, non-appreciative and and it, it just, it seemed like every month, every month, every month, it was oh, the gosh. same fight. And, and this is a big, painful fight with, this is a big blow up that you guys were having every it, month. Yeah, he would, he would go to another room and he'd just, you know, be by himself. And um, he just as long as he didn't hear me, <laughs> as long as he didn't hear me or see me, he was fine. Ooh, this sounds, that sounds devastating. That sounds really uh, rejecting, right? Like you were really feeling alone. That's exactly what it felt like. It felt like um, I just always felt rejected. And I will admit that, you know, 
when we were um, like before we we moved in and and everything was just like a spark and um, you know lots of pi everywhere and then the minute you know we were living together it was it was over it was it was oh. not worth it. <laughs> and I think it could it could be attributed to a lot of things but I, I definitely have to say that you know for myself I I just I wasn't very pleasant to be around uh, there was moments where where you know things were great and then there was moments where it just didn't seem like we should be together and I I would you know chit chat with my friend and I'd get on the fence and she'd always tell me you know like you could do better and um he should not be treating you like this and and then it's funny because I would always come around and say like well he means well and this is what he's really trying to do and and like in that same conversation you know, I might have been complaining about him, but then I start to see the light. And I realized that maybe that wasn't the appropriate conversation to have with this friend because eventually she she got tired. You know, she got tired of hearing the same drama and and she didn't want to be friends anymore. So um, mm -hmm. that relationship ended kind of. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it was okay because it really, it really led me to your program. <laughs> I already was familiar with the book. I was, um, I had a friend who, who referred the book over and said, you have to read this, you have to read this. And, and I finally listened to her and then we would, you know, have our conversations back and forth. And, um, she was really, uh, a, you know, the, the, the push I needed to go in the right direction. And, you know, the reason why I had brought up the, the 10 year reunion um, was because it, it kind of leads back to that, our, our breakdown, breakdown. So um, one thing I had always told my husband was that I will never invade your privacy. I'm not going to touch your phone. There's, I think you deserve your, your, your respect. And, and that's, that's yours. Right. Um, and of course, since I was starting to get these bits of jealousy and things like that, well, I shopped for pain and, and, and I couldn't stay on my page and I had to, I just had to look. <laughs> and, um, by this time we're already moved closer to my job. Um, I'm not doing the super drives or anything like that. And uh, we're trying to get the house ready to be a home. Um, we had a couple pieces of furniture in, some mattresses and stuff like that. And he loved to play his video games at this time. And um, he handed me a phone, his phone over so he could buy me some wine. It was just so sweet, right? Like, here we go again. Him trying to do something nice for me. And I get that, like, look, just take a look. <laughs> and I don't know, I took the phone and I just, I, I had gone away because he was busy playing anyway. He wasn't thinking I would do anything like this. I'm scrolling through the phone and I start seeing a picture, picture or two, and a conversation with a specific woman and at that time, you know, I just, my heart dropped and. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with you, like it, it felt like the world was ending and I was, I was just so crushed and it was the hardest thing to confront him about what I had just done. One, because, well, I wasn't supposed to be going through his phone <laughs> and two, because, you know, there's this other woman on his phone and um, it, my husband is very attractive. <laughs> he is, <laughs> he is muscles and he is six, six. And it's just, I can't imagine people not, you know, being like, wow, Hey, look at him. <laughs> so 
there wasn't a lack of, um, you know, women maybe giving him attention that I wasn't giving him. And it wasn't that he cheated. I will say that it wasn't an infidelity. It, it was a woman trying to pursue him. And um, in that moment, for me, it still felt that way. So, of course, my husband is, he is my biggest reflection. <laughs> as soon as I looked through his phone, he went through my phone. And it was not the same thing because my husband is a researcher. <laughs> <laughs> oh. that is what he does for a living so as a as a researcher he was very thorough he did not just look at one conversation he drilled back all the way all the way to that reunion and um during that time he was so um vulnerable with his emotions you know i think that um, it was a shock to him to see that my single life was not the person that he was, you know, living with. And, and although it was years before, um, it still really hit home that I would be able to, um, you know, have these other relationships with other men while he was pouring his heart out to me and it was just such a betrayal to him. It, it devastated him. Mm. And that day he picked up all his stuff. Oh. It was like three in the morning. He, he packed up whatever he could and he raced out of here two hours away. And he, there's so many things he said um very hurtful names and you know it was like my <laughs> my closet full of skeletons was out and I just I couldn't I couldn't say anything to really how can I how can I defend myself um I try to say you know that was that was so long ago and um you know things like that whatever whatever came up to help me defend myself and and it didn't it didn't work um he immediately said he's never coming back and and he doesn't want to have anything to do with me doesn't matter what i would say just it was never going to happen wow oh my gosh you must have been crushed i was it was it was so scary it was a scary time but this was what i needed because I knew that I was a problem. So even though I was reading through your book and I had read it multiple times and um, I joined the Facebook group and things like that, um, it still, it, it wasn't the push. It wasn't the, that pit where, you know, there's no way, but going back up. And I did tell him this. I said, you know, Maybe this is exactly what we needed because I know that I have to find my peace. I have to, I have to be better and, and I have to work on it. I have to do it. I have to do it without your help. And I joined your diamond program. And at first it was six months and I stuck, stuck in there for a year because my husband was still moved out. He, he stayed he, he didn't live with us for a little more than um, a year, maybe like a year and a half almost. Uh, it was, it was a strange time. It was a very strange time and it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. Wait, so he leaves you, says, I'm never coming back. And you say to yourself, well, this is good because I need to do better. I mean, that's an unusual response, right? Through your, I mean, you must have been crying and that, that's a lot of pain. It's a lot of pain. Yeah, it, it was, it was difficult. It was a difficult time. I, absolutely. If I wish you wouldn't have left, but it really helped me lean in on the blind spots that I had because 
even though I felt like I was this person who can take on anything, um, you know, it just, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for my relationship. And I, I loved being in the program. I loved having a coach that, um, coach Tammy, shout out to her. <laughs> um, I, I loved having a coach that really heard me and she just always said I was so inspiring and um, I felt like I had hope and going in on the group calls and just seeing all the women who, who were struggling and who were also getting their miracles because you always said this place is full of miracles. It happens all the time. And I got my miracle. <laughs> I had got my miracle. Um, I think during one of the coach calls that we had, um, I remember, I remember I was sharing how my husband had moved out, but he never really left <laughs> because he would, he would still find things that he wanted to do with the kids. And now granted, um, these are, our separate children, right? My daughter and his son. But he said that we um, we would meet like every weekend to get the kids together. And he would, um, because the house is new, he wanted to come and help fix up little things here and there throughout the house. Like if there was a, a, a floorboard that was loose, um, a refrigerator needed to get installed. It's just, he always was looking out for us. He just always wanted the best for us. And, and it's, it's funny because now, right now he's telling me sometimes I, I remember when I was leaving and I was telling, uh, my daughter's name is Anita. She said, he said, I was telling Anita, Hey, um, you can always call me if you need me. And she said, he'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you around. <laughs> oh my gosh. Super cute. So she could see, she could still see. So he's gone, but he's, yeah, he never left. He never, he never left. left. And any excuse to get back together. And it wasn't like you had separate children. He wasn't, he's, yeah, he's not your daughter's father. You're not his son's mother. So that, that wasn't the glue that was holding you together. There was something else. Yeah. Wow. It, it was so powerful. And like I said, I have to attribute it to the program. I have to attribute it to your help and your support because every day was a moment where I found myself, do I want to be the better person, the better version of myself, or do I want to be stuck being the same person? And, you know, my husband, he, he considered himself a single man. You know, he, like I said, he, he had, he didn't have any lack <laughs> wow. in, in, in the department of, you know, romance. And even, even through all that, like, I, I remember him, um, like, coming over in the middle of the night and asking me, you know, is it okay if I come by? And I was just like, in the middle of the night, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it just, I, it was it was great. It was just, he was so attracted to me and I felt so loved. And we, um, we were celebrating my birthday and his birthday, um, because my birthday is in January and his birthday is in February. And, uh, needless to say, there was, uh, maybe a month or two there where I wasn't sure what was going on, but Lo and behold, um, I was pregnant. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Little, this, nice little gift. This is a uh, steamy separation you were having here. <laughs> it was, it was, it really was. And just, it, things just got so, so good. Um, we were on the phone all night. Um, it's like dating. It's like, yes. Just when you're fallen in love knew. Yes, exactly. It is exactly how it was. And when um, my son was born, um, he's actually turning two this oh. year. And 
it just everything changed. Um, I saw, you know, I saw him for what he was trying to be, what he tried so hard to do in the very beginning. <laughs> and I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't see. Um, I was just so stuck in this space of, oh, woe is me that I, I just, I had lost this ability to see how good of a man he was and he's a great father and hmm. it's just amazing. <laughs> wow. Wow. And so, and so you used to have this conversation where he'd say, you don't respect, you don't respect me. You're ungrateful. Um, I can't make you happy. That used to be kind of a recurring source of pain at your house. Yes, absolutely. And, and it was very difficult because he felt betrayed. So um, sure. our biggest um, thing to overcome was that, that trust, um, that betrayal. And it, Coach Sonia actually helped me through one of the coach calls in this aspect because every time we had a conversation while, while we were separated, um, he would bring up that I I lied to him and that he couldn't trust me. And, and whenever I would say, I love you, he would say, no, you don't. And um, it, it just, I needed, I needed to really clean my side of the street. And I started doing my apologies and, and really, really being honest about it, really being truthful because I think a lot of times I would say the right things, but maybe they didn't feel heartfelt. And there was one moment where um, he didn't even remember having the conversation with me, but he had brought this up again. And I just said, you know, I just, I wanted to apologize because I know I made bad decisions and I know I betrayed you. I know I, I hurt you and I want to be a better me. I don't, I don't want to hold on to that anymore. I want to be better. And I'm, I just really apologize for disrespecting you. And can I tell you that he's never brought it up again? Oh. <laughs> what? That was it. That was it. That, that was, was last it. time. So, so this is, this is, I'm, I mean, that is so interesting. So he's the one that felt betrayed. And when you, it sounds like there was a new level of accountability on your side, like a real heartfelt um, accountability and apology. And as soon as that happened, it went away. This is not an issue at your house anymore. It just disappeared. And it just, it, man, just it's so funny. It was like having a whole nother superpower because now I was starting to catch, like, instead of reacting, I was able to start listening to his heart and what he meant. Uh, I wasn't stuck on the words. I can, I can really dig deep and be like, wow, oh, he's, he's doing this in my best interest. And um, it, it just, it stopped that, like abrasive feeling that defensiveness that would keep coming up and keep coming up. And, you know, for me, I didn't understand that that was disrespectful. But I thought I was just telling him, Hey, but I'm filling you in on what I'm doing and this is what it is. And, or like, if he said, um, like, well, the dishes are getting full and stuff like that. Like, instead of saying, you know, well, I would rather, read a book right now and put my feet up uh I would start saying well I cooked and I cleaned and I this and, and I and, worked and yeah and instead of having that conversation it would just always turn into like you know what you're right honey the, the dishes are piling up oh and, my gosh I'll get there <laughs> I'll get to them <laughs> and oh. and it's fine it's fine there's <laughs> we had one argument about dishes and never again, because he knows like we, we are, 
we trust each other to do what we're supposed to do. And we trust each other that, you know, it's, it's not about keeping secrets. It's we're on the same team. It's not, it's, it's not a, 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 who's the better spouse. It's, you know, together we're making this relationship the best for our children. And, you know, we want to role model to them what it is to be in a healthy relationship. Uh, we want to be together forever. We want to see our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. It's, it, it's what I aspire to at least. <laughs> ah, yeah. Wow. So your marriage is, is all that now. It sounds like this is how close and connected you are. There's no, there's no distance. There's no competing in terms of, and, 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 and the defensiveness is gone. It sounds like that's your superpower that you that you didn't have before that you now can just call on when 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 it's needed and you're to create this environment where there's so much emotional safety it sounds like you know i was thinking it took me 3 years to destroy our marriage and in less than a year i was able to get that puppy love back and Yes, there's still, you know, there's still moments where we're, you know, maybe we stub our toes. <laughs> sure, of course, but of course. It's, it's never, it's never like, it's over. It's, it's not going to be over. It's never going to be over. We're, we're committed to each other and he believes in me and I believe in him. And, and, you know, earlier you said the glue wasn't the children. Um, he, he always tells me that I'm the glue in our relationship. And he said, my love is very resilient. And, and, and I, I, I'm just so grateful because I can do that. It's, it's all in me. It's all my power to do this. And, and I just feel so good to be able to say that. <laughs> Yes, it's an amazing feeling. That that's that is your power. You sound so empowered. So I love that. And um and it sounds like you both acknowledge that. Did, and it almost sounds like he is acknowledging too of your transformation, of all the changes that you made. Like he sees it and he he celebrates that in you as well. So yeah. this is like the best accomplishment. Absolutely. He, he does. He does. I think that, um, you know, there's just so much you learn from these group calls and there was, there was one thing specifically, I, I remember coach Mar saying, and she said, you know, husbands get to have their opinion and just because they say something doesn't mean it's true. And, <laughs> and, what she was saying was really like, don't get hung up on those words. Just, you know, sometimes we play that game of, uh, you know, sarcasm or. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Know. Like, poke. yeah, let's poke, <laughs> poke. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, my husband will do it every once in a while, but I'm so grateful now that like, I can see the lightheartedness in everything. And I tell him, it, you know, it's my, it's my strength to be able to see the good and everything that's happening. And sometimes he'll tell me like, well, yeah, you do that. <laughs> you do that. But he's such a realist. And, and it's so funny when like, sometimes I'll just laugh randomly because I don't know. I, maybe like I'm doing a little dance or something and he's like, you're just so goofy. And I, I can't help myself. I feel like I have to, like, <laughs> I have to get it out of my system. I have to be a little joyful. And, and I just, I'm so glad that like, I have that now where I can be comfortable in my skin. Um, whether he says something or not, like, to appreciate my goofiness or not, he he does at the end. And that's really all that matters is that 
I'm happy. I'm comfortable being myself. We're not disrespecting each other. And, and like I said, the mirror, he's just my biggest reflection. Every time that I am my best self, he is his best self. And, and you know, what else can I do as far as motivating him? You know, I don't, I don't have to lie to him or anything like that. He just does it because he wants to. And I even see it like we go to the gym together and um, he'll joke with me about picking up weights that only he can pick up, but I try it. And if I shock him and just move him a little bit, he's like, Oh, now I got to go harder. (laughs) So I just, I take that in our relationship. Like that's what we're doing now. It's that instead of, picking the lowest low and going for lower, you're picking the highest high and just keep raising that bar because it's, it's only us. Like if, if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. It's, it's possible. Miracles happen every day. Um, You know, even if we have a low moment, we just, I know that we're going to come up higher from it. It's, it's never going backwards. It's always moving forwards. And I know there's uh, like with, I think you had mentioned it on one of your podcasts too, about like knowing people who get divorced and how that increases your, your rate of potentially getting divorced. And, and it's like a scary world. Um, but I want everybody to know that like, it doesn't matter how many times you mess up. (laughs) It doesn't matter as long as you're in it to be a better person. And every time that you shine through, it's, you're only going to keep attracting those things that, that you need, that you deserve. The signs are going to be there. You're going to, you're going to see it. You're going to see all the good. (laughs) And this from somebody like that, it used to be you didn't feel loved and he said you weren't grateful and now you sound so grateful and it sounds like you feel so loved. Yep, I do. I do. I feel like I'm just, I used to tell my husband all the time, I'm just so spoiled. I'm a spoiled brat (laughs) and you do it. (laughs) And he loves to, he loves to. Wow. So, I mean, this is amazing. This, it is a miracle. This sounds like you created a miracle in your family. It's an absolute miracle. And it took, took a year and a half for him to come back. And during that time, it sounds like, it sounds like you had a lot of confidence that he was coming back and this was all going to, even Anita knew, right? Anita knew like, he never he's, left. he'll be back. He never left. And, uh, and now, and it sounds like things are pretty amazing at your house that there's um there's a mirroring you talk about the mirroring and you're really kind of both it sounds like just a upward spiral of positivity at your house like he admires you and you respect him and he adores you and you uh, you're grateful and uh and there's a lot of cuddling going on and all that and um so how do you think this has impacted your kids oh uh well, <laughs> I think now having two boys and a girl, um, I can tell like when I would tell them to do something, they don't listen. Like <laughs> they would just like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, mom, whatever. Yeah. And now it's like, oh my God, you know, I just love how clean your room is. And oh, you're such a big boy. You do this and you brush your teeth. And and it our youngest is just he's thriving. He is thriving. And you know, our two older kids, they're also doing good because they see the stability that we have. Um, you know, both coming from obviously co-parenting homes. So they, they travel back and forth and it's, it's kind of funny because both of them like to talk, right? So (laughs) they're always talking about how, um, you know, we're always cuddling and kissing and, um, you know, like who, who wants to talk about that? (laughs) Apparently our kids are telling them and, you know, they come back here and they tell us like, oh, they're yelling over there. And I'm like, what? Really? Well, we don't do that here, do we? And, no, 
Wow. Wow. So you have these, your kids are reflecting back to you also another mirror that, um, that you're, you're grossing them out with all the cuddling and kissing maybe <laughs> in a good way. Right. It's like what everybody wants, not grossing them out. Maybe, maybe they're not grossed out. It's like a sign of stability to them that they take comfort in. It sounds like. They want lots of kisses too. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Sounds like a great environment for those kids. So congratulations on that. It must feel so good. And I hear you are using skills with them as well. The intimacy skills that you have become so masterful in. I'm training uh, my daughter. She knows. She'll say, I would love. <laughs> oh, she knows how to express her desires in a way that inspires. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Well, what is your tip to somebody who is where you were? where he's moved out, he feels betrayed and he says he's never coming back. And there's been a lot of fighting and a lot of hurt and maybe it just feels kind of hopeless. And she wants what you have now where there's, there's lots of kisses and cuddling and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh there's lots of PI going on. There's puppy love again. And what, what's your best tip for her? What should she do? I would say, trust yourself, do everything in love. It's not a tip for tat. Um, the feeling is temporary. There's, I think a lot of times we misuse our feminine power of emotion because we are um, so sensitive to it, but it is, it's, it's like a symptom, right? Like when you have these feelings, these emotions, it's more like a symptom, like something's happening that, um, I need to take care of. Um, if I'm tired, you know, I need, I need to take a break. I need to listen to myself. And, and I think that a lot of times maybe we don't do enough reflection. I don't think we do enough, sitting down and really digging deep in our own selves. Um, and there's so much out there where, you know, it's very easy to blame somebody else and, and maybe, you know, blow it off and, and say they're the problem. But, you know, when you have that power to really know yourself, um, I can't remember where I heard it before, but, you know, your happiness comes from power and power is self-improvement. And this, this self-improvement is, it's so easy. Like it's so easy if you just listen to yourself and just keep doing things the way that you would like, right? It, love, lots of love. Don't, don't get tarnished with, you know, people telling you like, how oh, he's no good for you. <laughs> yeah. um, he's mistreating you. Yeah. yeah. You know, just really believe in that relationship. Have that faith. Faith goes so far and, you know, fear only breaks you down. And I, I really, I really believe in like having that, the thinking, <laughs> <laughs> because for me, that was my biggest issue. I just kept making this story up because in my mind, I'm thinking that my husband is rejecting me. I think that he's, um, he doesn't understand. And, you know, all this time he's only ever wanted to do what's right for me and protect me. And I just, having that mind shift helps so much in in everything. I, I don't go to that, you know, negative side of things right away now. Now I'm just always looking for what's the best. Expecting the best from him and from your kids. And did I just hear you say that this self-improvement is easy? I think you just said that. <laughs> I did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. It's interesting. That's interesting. It felt easy. 
the recognizing part is the hard part. Yeah. And once you once you know it, it's just it's so quick. It's such a yeah. so I, I told my husband that you know if you ever see me being grumpy, can you just give me a hug and kiss and tell me you love me? And you know he would say, I try getting close to you. <laughs> <laughs> Better use two hands. Happens. Use both hands in case I'm really, like, really grumpy. Right? Yeah. But yeah. it works. It works. It works because, because I know he loves me, and I love him. And sometimes you just need that reminder. So I love that. I love it. It's well. This is amazing. What, what do you think you would say to Vanessa if you could go back in time and tell her what you know now? Oh. Going back in time. I would say that my husband is my other half. And if he is not as nice or as loving as I want him to be, it's probably because I'm not showing that and it's okay it's okay it's okay to mess up just take it one step at a time um i i really would say maybe like tap a little bit and say read that book that your friends on here read <laughs> but yeah just I really have to say that understanding that my husband is there for me, that that was pivotal for me. He's my rock. And so it sounds like really just being off the fence, like this is the one, this is the guy, not like, is this the guy? But this is, this is my man. This is him. Um, made a big difference for you. It did. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, this is an incredible story, Vanessa, and um, I you are very inspiring. You were saying how Coach Tammy would always tell you how inspiring you are. Well, she is right. <laughs> you are super inspiring, and I just want to congratulate you on all that you've accomplished by giving you my Best Wife Award. You have, hey. <laughs> you have earned this. You have earned this, and I hear that it was easy, but um, <laughs> but it's it's still it's a big accomplishment either way, whether it was easy or. Um, there's certainly a lot of painful moments in there. And I I love your beautiful gratitude for all that you've gone through in this area. Um, and anyway, and, and not everybody does this because it takes a lot of courage and takes a lot of vulnerability and accountability. And you're just off the charts there. So I just, I just want to thank you and congratulate you um, for being the best wife. Thank you. Thank you. So amazing story. I'm so grateful we got to hear it today. And uh, yeah, thank you for being so transparent about what was happening at your house and how you changed it uh, so that everyone else can can benefit from that. You're, you did a lot towards ending world divorce today. I hope I inspire other women to really look inward and ask for help if you need it. Because... Laura Doyle community is here for you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> if you enjoyed hearing the real life story of how a wife made her struggling marriage playful and passionate again, subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'm going to share seven ways to be more attractive to your husband. And by the way, here's a hint. None of them have to do with your physical appearance. In the meantime, I hope you are having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that my Aunt Penny said she thought that self-care just meant eating more chocolate. And, you know, she's not wrong.